Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. You get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. <laughs> They're going to make you a cash offer on the table today. You've got 300 there. Right. How do you feel about that? That's a very firm no. No. <laughs> that's a very firm no. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say, oh, no way, Jose, don't go for that. Have a gamble. Go to auction. We'll probably get a little bit more money there. And sold. Now, today, the show comes to you from Alton Towers in Staffordshire. There's a great crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. They brought along their treasures. You know why they're here. They want to walk away with the real deal. For a white knuckle ride of a different kind, the crowds are pouring in to see David and our dealers. I'm Malcolm, I'm Karen. Hi, First Karen. First up, we're with Karen Del Menny, and she's ready for a flutter. An exquisite little brooch has just arrived. Definitely getting the old juices flowing for that one. It's got some diamonds in a peridot, and very sparkly, and hopefully, makes some about 150 to 200, I was thinking. But will Karen put down enough cash to get Anne buzzing? Oh, what a darling little brooch you've bought in. Oh, I could be quite interested in this. <laughs> so, has this come for your mum or somewhere? No, no, no. Um, I bought it probably about three to four years ago, and I don't wear it, so yeah. I just like to keep looking at it every now and again, but it might as well go to somebody who probably would cherish it a little bit more. This is a really pretty little brooch. This sort of jewellery is really popular in the 19th century mm. in Victorian times, particularly anything of what they call bugs. Yes. Bug jewellery. They absolutely love. Now, get the old glass out. So we've got some nice little rose-cut stones, rose-cut diamonds, haven't we? Yes. I mean, it's all there. Ooh. That slightly intrigues me, the back of it actually. We've got a very lazy clasp on the mm. back. I know I would have expected to see a really quali good quality clasp um, nice. for a little brooch like this. So, looking at it closely, this may be one that was made later than you think, yes. later than Victorian times, um, but in the style of one. Yes. But it doesn't detract from the fact that we've still got some really good stones here. So I'm going to try and buy it. And in the wings, I can see a figure looming that's going to come in. And <laughs> I wonder who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Dickinson, do you like this? Oh, and while you're here, look, I'm getting that £150. I'm putting that on the table. What do you think of that offer? I'm feeling a bit dizzy. Have you had too much sun today? Got a fair I'm, next week. Oh, I've got a fair next week. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that answers it, got a fair next week. I've heard what Karen said, and I can tell you I spoke to one of our gemologists, and she says 150 to 200 pounds is the kind of money they're talking. You can gamble, it's your call, mm. but if you go and it doesn't sell, don't look at the tube and say, because <laughs> I don't think it will bring a lot more. Ooh, so Anne. Oh. Um, even when David was talking, I was looking at your face and you, you just weren't that yeah. enamoured with the price, are you? I felt just a tiny bit more. Um, would you mind if I asked how much you paid for it? It was less than that. <laughs> ah, OK. Because it was a long time ago. How long ago was it? About four years. Well, I mean, trust me, in our terms, <laughs> that's yesterday. <laughs> I got stuck, I was 10 years old. <laughs> um, it's up to you. I'm not going to add to it. Right. I think you've done well if you've got yeah. a profit in four years, to be quite honest. Okay, no, then. Gift no, okay, I'll accept your offer. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was hoping for some more, but, um, you know, if they've said it isn't what it appeared to be, you know, not as old as it was, it is more than I paid for it, so it's okay. Very pleased with that. With a bit of luck, there's a 50 left in it, but we'll find out, won't we? That we will, Callum. Julie, nice Over to meet you. Over at Stuart Hofgarten's table, the police have arrived. 
I bought a tin motorcycle policeman and I'm expecting to get about £40, £45 for it. Patrolman on a motorbike, uh, okay, not, not, not the worst, not the best. Mm, not the most enthusiastic response from Stuart. Um, Good nice luck, to be Julie. In the box. You can see what it is. Yeah. Clockwork toy. No, battery. Battery? Yes. Ah, so I'm wrong. So it's a bit later than I thought, actually. But uh, So it's a battery-driven toy. Yeah. Um, tell me about it. What do you know about it? You obviously know it's got a battery in it for a start. <laughs> yeah. um, it was bought to me as a gift when I was about nine years old, so that makes it about 40 years old to me. So it wasn't new when you had no, it? No, it was second-hand when oh, I had it. It wasn't that old when you bought it, because I was going to no. say it's 50s, mm. and you're saying... Uh, I was 63 born, so... So you've looked after it, haven't yeah. you, really? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the thing about toys like this, tin toys, that they got played with. Yeah. And it's the ones that have been kept in the original box and everything that uh, right. really holds the money these days. The box is a bit sad, yeah. but it's done its job. It's kept that nice and clean, hasn't yeah. it? So uh, uh, it's Japanese. It will say made in Japan on it somewhere. Yeah. Um, why are you selling it? Why not just keep um, it for the grandchildren? Then? For the simple fact is, for the last 22 years, it's sat in a box, in a storage it? box. Yeah, it's not in, a, not in a cabinet on show and no, like that? No, it isn't. Um, and it hasn't had batteries in it t till today. Put them in right. and it's worked straight away. Has it? Yeah. Let's give it a flash. Is that lever there, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone's just evacuating the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a fun thing. Yeah. Quite a fun thing. 20, 40, I'm thinking 50 pound, um, 50 pound. Well, just before you make a decision, let, let me say what the independent valuers feel about it and the auctioneer. They say 30 to 50 quid. You've already got 50 quid on the table. As always, Stuart wants something, he puts his money where his mouth is, and I think it's a good buy. Thank you, David. He feels the same as I do, obviously. Yeah, and um, I'll accept you do. Do we have a deal? We do have a deal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I just got a bit carried away. Three wheels and I'm anybody's. Well, you're easily won over, Hi. Stuart. Hello. Across Hello. to Hello. David Tupman now, who may find it hard to resist Rosie. I bought in today a Dalton Lambeth jug. Um, I purchased it about a week ago just to come onto the programme. I thought I'd give these dealers a good run for the money. The Dalton jug isn't really what I want to buy. But Rosie seems such a nice lady that I know I'm going to end up offering too much money for it. Thank you very much for coming in today. Um, what, so could you describe what you brought us in? I uh, bought a Royal Dalton Lambeth jug in. Um, and to be honest, I only bought it last week. <laughs> bought it last week? You're hoping to make a quick profit. That's no, the sort of no, thing I do. No, it's a show. I'm totally and utterly love the show. So I thought, what can I... Better go I... buy something. Yes, Bring yes. it in. Get on telly. Precisely. Okay. Oh, gosh. Well, I hope you're going to make a profit. Oh, well. So where did you buy it? Uh, in a local auction in Leek. Right. Did you just buy anything or did you...? No, I was very selective when I went round and I saw that and I thought, that is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So but you're not tempted to keep it? No. <laughs> right, OK. No. What we've got is a Dalton uh, jug uh, and it's a pattern that's called Dalton Chine and it was made by pressing lace on the unfired body which will create this pattern then taking the lace off firing it and then painting on the glaze afterwards. And I believe it all, was always uh, produced in the same colours. Uh, and a very pretty example uh, and in a perfect condition, which is great. And I believe that this is approximately 1910 in date. Uh, right, you, so you're happy to take a quick loss? Depends. <laughs> okay, I'll it put some depends. In and see what we see where we get. I'm going to put down uh, 10, 20, 30. Does that show your profit? That's no. Are we miles away? Yeah, well, not miles away, but it's no. No. Right. Look how, it, look, look how it shines. I know it's a lovely jug, but it's not particularly desirable or valuable. I think 
that sort of Victorian English pottery isn't the most desirable thing in the world. What can I say? Um, nice Rosie, I, I like you very much, and I'm going to put an extra £10 down. £40. But I think that's going to be my final offer on that jug. But you can take it to auction if you like. How hard dealer you are today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a hard dealer, oh, I'm telling you. I don't know. Oh, yes. You yes, sure? Yes. That's great. Yes. Okay, like, what did you pay for it, Rosie? 23. Twenty-three pounds. Okay, so you've you've made seventeen pounds profit. You've had the fun of being on the show, and you know, I think you should become an antique dealer. You're doing really well. You're doing better than I am. <laughs> Coming up, Karen gets a warning from the Duke. You have to hold her down sometimes because she'll try and take the goods off you for a lesser price. But on I'm this dealer, occasion, moi, I'm a dealer. So, can she change the habit of a lifetime? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the Alton Towers Estate in Staffordshire. It's all go inside the den. Your Babs Barbara has brought in a large Moorcroft vase and she knows what she wants. I'm um, hoping for about £200. I would be happy with that. Moorcroft's a difficult subject because in this area it's very popular and can make a lot of money. Where I sell, it's not so popular or as well known. So, a bit of an unknown quantity for me. Let's hope Babs can convince Cora Jeffrey to put down a decent bid. Magnificent blue glaze, what a lovely, lovely vase. It's yours? It yes, it is. Yes, it uh, came to me through an old gentleman. Came in one day in a factory I used to own china factory and uh, he gave it to me so you had a china factory so you were mm -hmm. involved in porcelain yes in uh, china flowers actually you made china yes, flowers yes manufactured china flowers so you've understood porcelain and you appreciate porcelain yes i do yeah. and this is actually pottery yes it's very heavy so it's a very heavy pottery and there you have the early moorcroft mark so it's a 1930s piece and you've made in england mm -hmm. so it is it's between the wars Yes. And the thing about Moorcroft is it's usually very distinctive. Mm -hmm. You've got the early, slightly Art Nouveau designs and then the later piped, the very rich colours. Yes. And this is plain. People who collect Moorcroft don't actually like it. Mm. So what I'm going to put down the table is going to reflect what I think yes, yes. I'm going to get. So let's put some money on the table. We're going to start with a 50. <laughs> 70, 90. I'm going to put one, we've got 110 on the table. Now, I don't know how you feel about that. I, I would have liked a little more. I would. I'm going to put 120 on, and that is my best offer. 120 on the table, Barbara, and we've got some help around the corner. Well, I've just run down to speak to our valuers, and, um, they are saying 100 to 150. 120 is on the table. Is that it? Can we push you for another tenner? I think fair enough. I'll put the other tenner okay. in. Uh, now, you don't have to accept no, that. No. What I'm saying to you, at 130 pounds, it's the equivalent of 150 in the auction. And because I've taken advice on this area, which I'm not familiar with, they tell me it would be more difficult to get over the 150 yes. in the auction. So if I put another 10, if we make it the 130, yes, please. we'd have a deal. Yes. Well, let's do that then. So take away the 10, 130 on the table, and we have a deal. Right. Thank you so much. Our dealers are a big attraction here today. Hi, your name's sir. Stuart, John. meet John. John. I've bought the gold ring in. I'm expecting 180 pounds. If it fits me, I'll buy it. If it doesn't fit me, I'm not so sure. Well, there's only one way to find out, Stuart. So tell us about it. Is, your, is it your own ring or something that's come in the family? It, no, it's one I bought in auction. At auction? Mm. Recently? Oh, some year, a few years back. And does it fit you? On my little finger. Excellent, OK. What's important, it might fit me too. So I will try that, if I may. Uh, not going your way at the moment, is it? No. 
Can we get it stretched, I wonder? Anyway, it's a gents ring, it's 18 carat, and it has a diamond. You're well aware of that. I'll just have a look at the diamond. This is made in Japan. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> there seems to be a little chip in the diamond, mm -hmm. and it's it's got a bit of a, a low clarity. It's not extremely clear, but it's still a diamond nevertheless. It's a good size. And from looking at the hallmark, it's about 1880, 1890. So, gents, diamond ring, 18 carat. Why are you selling it? Well, can I ask? I, I don't wear it very often because I thought, well, if I'm going to wear it and lose it, what's, what's the, the point? point? I agree. It's gone all together. Let's see if we can buy it from you. Yes. You want to sell it? I'd like to buy it. Yes. 20, 40, 60. 80. A hundred pound of anyone's money. 120. 140 pounds. No. Oh, no. No. I'll make it 150. Yes. 150 any good to you? No. So it's off to auction? Yes. I wish you the very best. Okay. Thank you very much. Nice, nice meeting nice. you. Not a bad looking ring, but not for me. I expected a little bit more, and I love going to auction. It's one of my hobbies, so it'll be another day out. Let's hope four we can twenty, make it a four, profitable day four, out six, for you. Four, with eight, David, an auctioneer, and so Richard Winterton. Nine hundred and fifty goes telephone bid. Now, what did you pay for it? I paid £110 plus commission. Probably about 125 quid, yes. something like that. Something okay. Like that. Right, on the day you were offered £150 by Stuart, one yes. of our dealers, yes. which was actually showing you a profit. Yes. Did you not think, I'll seal the deal now and I'll take that and take a profit? No, because I wanted to come and speak to you. Okay. <laughs> but you realise by speaking to me, you are taking a bit of a chance, you are gambling because it might not make the reserve of 180. That's what you placed on it. Yes. Okay, it's coming up now, John. Is it going to make that kind of money? Well, let's find out. 70 we go to, lot 70, the gold, diamond and solitaire now, lot 70, uh, 100, 110, 120, 130, 130, 130, 180, shout it up, 180 in the room, shout it, 190. 180? 190 now, 195, 190, 190. Says no, 190 to you, sir, 190, all done. We are sold at 190. Right, now the gamble's gone down at 190 pounds. I want to see a bit more of a smile on your face, John. Oh, well, I'm rather pleased so with it. That suddenly jumped in the room. They, was, they were offering 150 and suddenly, from nowhere, 180, 190. It wasn't your wife bidding at the back of the room, No, she, yeah, it wasn't my wife, I know that. <laughs> You'd be <laughs> very surprised if it was. Okay, 190 pounds. Real deal under the gavel, but he's taking home 156 quid, and that shows the profit. Back in the dealer's den. Jan, lovely to meet you. Those fascinating little items arrived at Karen's table. An interesting thing you've brought in. Where's that come from? Um, well, it's my mother's. Well, it was my mother's, and she, it goes between her house and mine. We get we swap things around, <laughs> <laughs> and it's been stuck on a shelf. Occasionally, I put a few flowers from the garden. And yeah. It doesn't do very much at all, really. It just sits there. Yeah. And she suggested that when we said we were coming here, perhaps I should bring it and see, you know, if it was of any value. Have you ever looked at the bottom and had a, um, a nosy to see what the mark says? Yeah, Royal Dalton. Royal Dalton. Yeah. Um, from my perspective, that's quite an unusual mark. And the whole thing's quite unusual, mm -hmm. to be honest, because it is, in fact, a pottery, okay. but it's encased in copper. Um, I believe it to be about sort of 1920s, around that sort of yeah. period, 1930s. Yeah. Yeah. And also, for me, I think there's a hint of arts and crafts about it, mm -hmm. which I love. I think the whole design of this is wonderful, but there is a little bit of a drawback, isn't a there? Bit, uh, always a but. Yeah, there's always a but. And uh, you have put flowers in it, did you yes. say? And it didn't leak because it's encased in copper. But it would have done, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because the interior, the pottery side of it is, is quite badly cracked, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, my, my offer will be a little bit tempered by the fact that they've got damage. 
but enhanced by the fact I think it's quite an unusual mark and certainly for Dalton this is an unusual piece so that makes it interesting for me 20 40 60 80 pounds Jan mm. Oh, yeah. I can I can hear yeah. mutterings, <laughs> mutterings in the distance, and I've got a feeling they're going to get louder and louder and louder. Muttering. What do you think? Fifty to seventy, seventy to ninety is where the area of auctioneers and expertise is from our valuers. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty. Smack on the money. You have to hold her down sometimes because she'll try and take the goods off you for a lesser price. But on I'm this occasion, moi. I'm a dealer. But on this occasion, I'm going to say to you, the price seems to me to be on its value and fair. I think so too. Very fair, yes. So we've got a deal. We have a deal. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you really so pleased much. With it. Thank you. 25 years in the business, never seen that mark before. Something new every day. I got much more than I expected, so I didn't quibble about that. I thought, take the money and run. Absolutely <laughs> jam. Right. Coming up, 20, one seller is 40, as easy to read as the book she's hoping to sell. 80 pounds. Oh, an eyebrow lift there. <laughs> you couldn't hide that one, could you? <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Alton Towers in Staffordshire. Next up, we have three silver dogs. Maybe Mam's best friend, but will they be David's? Not very keen on buying them, I'm afraid, but we'll see what happens. Thank you very much for bringing these in today. What, what have we got? We've got three silver dogs. Actually. Right. They were my mum's. When did she buy them? Do you know? I, I don't remember, but it's got to be. Possibly before 1950, I would think, because um, I remember them as a young girl when I was married in 1960 and left home, so it would be before then. Right, let's, let's have a look at them, shall we? And why are you selling them today? Because I've got so many ornaments and they're just in a box upstairs. Let's have a look underneath. Uh, we've got Silvac, which... Uh, um, Staffordshire factory and they've been producing for the last hundred years or so. I think these are probably, as you say, 1950s. Um, huh, you have an idea about how much you want to get for these? Not really, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> shall I see if I can tempt you? See if you can tempt me, yes, please. I'm going to put 20, 30 pounds on the table. That's ten pounds each. That's that ten pounds a dog. No, not for ten pounds a dog. Are you sure? I'm sure. Do you think they're worth much more than that? Maybe double. No, I don't think I'm going to pay. Want to give you a double? If I'm going to put another five pounds down to try and tempt you. No. You're going to take them to auction. You're not going to go any higher. <laughs> no, <that's it. laughs> No, I'm afraid that's as much as I'm going to offer for them. Um, yes, let them go to auction. Well, I think all you need at the auction is a pair of Silvac collectors and they could do very well for you. Uh, and I hope they do. And anyway, you're going to have a marvellous day out with David, so that'll be that's great. That's what fun. I was thinking. Pauline, okay. thank you very much Thanks, for being them in. They were my mum's dog, so I didn't really think uh, that was enough. I'm very sorry I couldn't give her any more money for them, but I hope they do very well for her in auction. We hope so too, David. Let's head straight to the sale room and find out. They're here in auction. The reserve is 30 quid. Are there going to be some dog lovers here in the sale room? We're about to find out. Woof, woof. Let's see what they bring under the gavel. Three silver dogs now. Five pounds, eight pounds, ten, twelve. 12 pounds I bid, 14, 12, 16, creeping up, 16, 18, 18 pounds I bid, the silver back at 18, 18, 20 pounds. 
I have 20 pounds. Okay, 20, 20 pounds. pounds. There is a bit of 20 if you want to take it, otherwise you have to take them. They can, we can sell them. We can sell. We'll help with the commission because okay, it's quite a way off. Okay, like the so commission is going to be um, not taken. Oh, that's very kind. 20 pounds, a long way off the guy, but we will sell 21. Oh, 21. 21, just in time. 21, 22, 23, 23 pounds. No, 23, 24. 24, 25. 26. Where will it stop? 28. <laughs> 30 pounds. Scrap the commission bit. 30 pounds. Hey, 30 pounds. 30 you gave pounds. us your word, sir. You gave us our word. word. 30 pounds. Sold at 30. It's gone at 30. Yours Excuse me, sir. You gave your word. There'd be no commission. I, I will stand by it, David. 30 pounds. <laughs> I blagged him for the commission. So no commission. 30 quid, you're going home with 30 pounds. Happy? I'm very happy. I tell you what, I'm a bit relieved. I thought we were in trouble there. 30 pounds, no commission deducted, biggest everywhere. That is the real deal. Back in the den, and Hello. Karen might have a Hello. fight on her hands over her next items. I'm just seeing coming in a nice little stack of uh, leather books. I'm not going to take uh, less than 40. But I was hoping to get 50. £10 each, but they're very fine examples. Might be a bit of a battle there, we'll have to wait and see. You might <laughs> we'll be have right fun there, anyway. Karen. Yes. Right, what have we got here? I'm sure you're dying to tell me. Well, I have got these five very impressive looking books that have stood in my shelf and at home for many years now. I feel it'd be a shame for them just to go to the tip when my executors get to work. I'm getting pretty ancient <laughs> and uh, so when I heard that uh, this show was on I thought now's the time and I hope that these will go to somebody who'll appreciate them even if it's only for cosmetic reasons yeah and they're also beautifully bound yeah mm. well in these days talking 19th century and a little bit it was all usually Moroccan leather that they used which was a top quality leather and this, all this gilt tooling on yes. them, are, they're adorable, I love them. Mm -hmm. um, I, and at home myself, I, I just pick up odd, le mm -hmm. beautiful bound books, because yeah. I really appreciate them, mm -hmm. shove them on my mm -hmm. um, shelves and, and admire them from there. This one, this one's grabbing me, Westminster Abbey. I think that's possibly the best. Oh, let's see that. Can <laughs> see that. And if we open it up, and we've got some quite nice illustrations here, some little engravings. There are, black yes. Black and white engravings. They're, they're really nice. This one particularly is in quite mm. good order, isn't it? Um, so time to go, Helen? Pardon? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean leave now. <laughs> I thought you meant time to go. <laughs> I mean, the that was time a very for the good books to go. <laughs> yes, I couldn't resist that. <laughs> You're getting your own back now, aren't you? Okay. I did understand you, but I chose not to. Ooh. I was just going to get up and go. Oh, naughty girl. <laughs> right, okay, so it's up to me to tempt you. Yes. I'm You're a very tempting lady. I've met my match here, haven't I? <laughs> I don't know, I've never done this before. <laughs> okay, now. Um, I'm going to put some money down on the table. I, it might be more than you're expecting. I'm hoping it will be. 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. Oh, an eyebrow lift there. <laughs> you couldn't hide that one, could you? <laughs> well, I know it's unwise always to accept the first offer. Could be the I've best be, one. You've I've heard that saying. I've been told. Will you go any further? No, I, 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 I'm quite happy that at 80 quid you're getting a good deal. That eyebrows up again. <laughs> well, yes, I'm contemplating. Um, yes, I think that's very fair. Okay. It's a deal. Helen, again, on my bookshelf at home. Thank you very They're much. They're staying with me. Good. Rather better than I expected. Delightful lady. Uh, I think perhaps I've struck lucky today. Oh, please, please, can we have Helen back? Wasn't she brilliant? And I'm going to keep the books. I think she was quite pleased about that, actually. Coming up, the Duke's Clock Corries game. I mean, I can see you wearing that <laughs> to polo, county fairs, anywhere that you would normally go. Ascot, even? Even Ascot. Dickens 
Alton's real deal from Alton Towers in Staffordshire. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Corey. Pleased to meet you. Our last seller to face the dealers today is Sharon. I've bought a watch along. It's an 18 karat gold watch with diamonds. I'd just like to get as much as humanly possible for the watch. Don't worry, Sharon. The Duke and auctioneer Richard Winterton will be keeping a close eye on proceedings. You're the proud owner of this lovely watch. I am, yes. How did you come by it? I bought it a few years ago, and um, obviously I've bought it along today to sell. It's a diamond dress watch, and I've worn it quite fondly for a long time now. Right. And it's nice because it's a nice rectangular face. But what's interesting is the size. Yes. If you put it beside, it's quite a big watch, isn't it? I don't need my glasses to see it. But that is, a, that is quite a plus. But it's not quite a man's size. No. It's that kind of midi in between. It could be worn by a man or it could be worn by a woman. Yes. So let's have another look at the maker. And it's a Bon Mercier Genève. So it's a Swiss movement. And it's set on either side with a row of diamonds. And then turning it over, it's 18 karat gold. And you've got a number, a long serial number, which is the serial number for the watch. Oh, right. Each watch will have a different serial number. OK. Now I look at that, Richard, and I think to myself, you tend to think of the retail price and you think, what would a retail price be on a Bon Mercier Swiss watch with a lizard strap? When that was new, perhaps 15 years ago, that was probably two and a half thousand quid or something. But it's a whole different story when it goes into a sale room. What's your feelings about second hand, we will call them, relatively modern watches in the sale room? In your particular room, do they do any good? Yeah, well, there's a strong market, David, for all good quality second-hand watches. Yeah. Uh, now, our independent valuers, they've gone in that uh, four to six hundred yeah. pounds. Okay, which I think is fair. Yeah. And you're somewhere near that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, I feel that it's realistic. In fact, I think it's inexpensive. And I think that is a very beautiful item and it's worth every penny of that. Let's see what Corrie puts on the table. So now we come to the important bit. Put some money on the table. Yes, please. Yes, please, she says. Lots. OK, <laughs> lots. So let's see if I can tempt you. OK. 50. 100. And I'm watching you carefully. <laughs> 150. 200. 250. We've got 300 there. Right. How do you feel about that? That's a very firm no. No. <laughs> That's a very firm no. 300 pounds on the table. Now that seems a little money to me for a beautiful watch like that. What do you think, Richard? Yeah, I think we're, 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 I'd be happy that uh, we could get more than that. I think, okay. yeah, but I think she's going to go more. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to convince Cory she needs to put more money down because it is a beautiful item. So you've got 300 on the table. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's have a look at it. What a smart little timepiece that is. Let me tell you where the auctioneer and independent valuers are. They say four to five, four to six. I think it's a rather smart and pretty watch. And for that kind of money, I can see someone in a sale room wanting to buy that for wearability. I don't think there's any scrap value here. I think that's smart, desirable and commercial. 300 on the table, I don't think it's enough. I think you've got to be thinking more in that 500 area. Thank or you. gamble and go to auction. Thank you. Well, I'm going to have to think again after David's gone. And he's right. It's very, very wearable. Yes. Very wearable item. So let's put some more money on the table Thank you. and see how we get on. 320, 340, 360, 380. 400, 420. You've got 420 on the table. Are we getting right. any better? We're getting nearer. We're getting nearer, yes. Well, I'm looking at the size of that watch and I'm looking at your wrist and I'm thinking, Corrie is a very smart, lovely lady. And that's smart enough for you, you know. It's delicate, it's attractive, it has diamonds down the side. I mean, I can see you wearing that to <laughs> Polo, county fairs, anywhere that you would normally go. Ascot, even? Even Ascot. I think it's a lovely thing. Will you give any more, or is that it for you, Corrie? 
Ooh, <laughs> I agree. I have to agree with everything you say, and you're right. It's totally wearable. I mean, would you give four fifty for that? Okay, I'll give you four fifty. I put four fifty on the table. I'm going to say this is your call. Four hundred and fifty. I think our dealer would get a wonderful buy. Yes. I'm going to let you make the decision. Thank you. Have you tried it on yet? He's terrible, you know. He twists my arm, and he knows I'm I mean, tempted. I think the size is right. Lovely. It's elegant. It looks beautiful on. Makes mine look mean. I think it's a <laughs> wonderful thing. Okay, I'll let you make your Thank mind you. up. It is a really nice watch, and really, yeah, very, very wearable. He's right. It it's is. elegant. It's smart. 450 is as far as I can go. Is this? I would like to make the 500. I would like 500 for it. I think at auction, I think. If, if that means it's got to make nearly the six yes. at auction. I'll put back the 20, and that. You got 470 on the table. No, 500. I can't. No. I don't think I'm going to make it. 500. I think you'll get more. I really do. I think it's a wonderful watch. I've got £10 here. No, 500. 500. Just round it up at 500. OK. I can, it's lovely. It is. And I think I'm going to have to say you win. I'm going to take the 20. I don't like that colour anyway. <laughs> Put a pink one, a girly pink girly one on the pink. table. You got the 500. Do we have a deal? We have a deal. We have a deal. Thank you. Oh, thank Thanks. you, Sharon. Thank you. See you, if I never sell it, I won't be sorry. It's a lovely watch. It's a lovely watch. <laughs> that was a hard deal. Paid more than I wanted to. I think I was a little bit, I shouldn't listen, but it's a lovely watch. It was great. I got exactly what I wanted, £500, and wish Corrie all the luck with selling the watch. That's nice, Sharon. Shall we see how she did? I think I'll get out in it. If not, I don't mind keeping it for a while. Cory actually sold the watch to a friend at a loss. What a softy. She didn't have much confidence in the Moorcroft vase either. Where I sell, it's not so popular or as well known. But was pleasantly surprised when it sold for £160 at a trade fair. It was a roller coaster ride for the rest of our dealers too. David knew he'd be sucked into buying the Dalton jug. Rosie seems such a nice lady that I know I'm going to end up offering too much money for it. He's yet to find a buyer for it. Hard luck, David. Stuart admitted to a strange tendency after paying £50 for the toy tricycle. I think back over the building. I just got a bit carried away. Three wheels and I'm anybody. Turns out it's a good weakness as he pocketed a nice little profit when it sold at auction. 20, that leaves Karen, 40, and she's had 60, a great ride today, snapping up every pounds. item put in front of her. Remember the copper bars? 25 years in the business, never seen that mark before. Something new every day. Well, it wasn't just a lesson learned, but a moneymaker too. And that insect brooch she adored. Very pleased with that. With a bit of luck, there's a 50 left in it. Not far off. It sold for £180. And those books she bought from Helen... <laughs> I've met my match here, haven't I? <laughs> ..have gone straight onto her bookshelf. It just goes <laughs> to show <laughs> it's not always about the money. We've had a really exciting day today. Good atmosphere, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what we like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.